ensure that your device has been turned off for at least 24 to 48 hours before attempting this repair. This is due to residual voltage that could still be inside of the power supply. The kit that you will need for this repair can be purchased at many online stores, pretty much anywhere online, and they are usually model specific. It will give you a date range, for example, 2010 to 2012 iMac disassembly kit. You can purchase these anywhere for around 20 to 25 dollars and they're very much well worth it. As you can see here, the video is showing me taking around the edges and sliding a small metal spacer that would come in a kit that you would buy that separates the adhesive from the back of the screen all the way around the perimeter of the screen. This will just release it and the kit that you buy also will also come with the adhesive strips to replace this so don't try to save these strips. They're, they're very disposable. You only want to insert the spacer two to three centimeters just inside the edge of the screen just so you won't damage any of the internal components there's very little around this edge as far as going in too far so if it does slip and go in a little bit too far that's okay but use very 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 I cannot stress this enough use a lot of caution around the eyesight camera at the very top because you can cut that ribbon cable it is very close to the top so use a lot of care when going around the eyesight camera just to ensure you don't cut the ribbon cable to the camera and don't go over the eyesight camera with the spacer go just to the edge of it and stop and then go on the other side to the edge of it and stop and the adhesive will actually rip free from that small portion where the eyesight camera is located. As you can see this kit came with suction cups to help remove the screen. Just make sure underneath where you are putting the suction cup is cleaned with something just to make sure that it's not dirty before you lift up on the actual screen. As you see me doing here, you may have to go back and forth with the spacer just a little bit because it can tend to re-adhese before you actually remove the screen. This is the ribbon cable to the eyesight camera. That tab that my finger is on just lifts up and the cable slides out and the other one does the same, I believe but they are both pretty much self-explanatory to remove them. This screen is heavier than I thought it was, so I enlisted the help of my father to help me remove it safely. This is one of the ribbon cables to the actual power supply. I was having a difficult time showing on camera how to remove with my hands in the way just because of the way the cable plugs in. It actually just slides out. Uh, in just a minute you'll see a picture in picture in the right hand corner at the bottom of another view of me actually unplugging the cable that you see with the tweezers on it right now. Please use caution if you are going to use something sharp or tweezers to remove this. I was just not physically able to get my hands underneath it enough to have enough leverage to remove that cable. And you can see that in the bottom right hand corner where that cable actually is just going to slide out where I use my hands there. My camera wouldn't focus on the screwdriver, but it is a T8. The kit came with approximately six different sizes, and it was a trial and error until I found the one that actually fit the uh, hex head that fit my particular power supply. But most kits have everything that you need to disassemble in them already. 
And just a forewarning, these screws were rather long, so just so you know, they can be fairly long on your model. On the other side of this power supply, there was a connection on both sides that you just squeeze and pull out on them, and that's the only connections that I found on the bottom of the actual power supply, depending on which model yours is. I believe there is a Delta and a Lidon model of the power supplies that was in this particular model of iMac. Once you remove all four of the screws, you have to kind of twist and turn the power supply ever so slightly and carefully to make sure that you can get to both connections. As you can see, there's one at the top center of the screen there. That one, just you wiggle it back and forth and it pulls right out. And there's one also by where my middle finger is at the bottom there. It's bigger that you'll see a little bit later on in this clip how you remove it as well. It's a good idea to have someone hold the actual machine while you're wiggling back and forth. Mine was fairly stuck on there. Uh, I ended up having to have my father hold on to the machine off of the camera while I wiggled back and forth on that connection and it eventually turned loose and came unplugged. This clip is rather long, I apologize for that, but this is me setting the new power supply back in. Um, and yes, the power supply was the problem on this machine. On the bottom side of it, I could see and smell where it had been burned or getting hot as well uh, to a certain degree. And I ended up replacing it with a different model. And that did fix my problem. Uh, so you can skip ahead if you'd like through a little bit of this. It's basically the reverse of everything you just saw as far as removing just the power supply is concerned. But I will leave it at its full length just so you can see the process. <laughs>
these next two clips are me scraping the adhesive off of the edge where the screen adheses and then after that you'll see me and my father replacing the adhesive with new adhesive strips that came also in the kit. And after all the adhesive strips are replaced, you can place the screen back on the device, hooking up any ribbon cables that are left over and ensuring all cables are plugged in to their proper places. I took this chance to clean out the dust on the inside of my iMac as well. Uh, it's very well recommended since it could cause a possible failure of your fan or other devices later on. And while you have it open, I would recommend doing it that way you won't have to reopen the case for such an occasion or to just replace something else that could have been prevented. Thank you guys for watching and best of luck on your replacement of your power supply and I do hope it fixes your problem as it did mine. My machine is working better than it actually ever has. Thanks a lot.